Hello everyone. Welcome back to Truth Proof. And today, a strange story. I often find myself saying it as strange as it gets. Because these accounts of cryptid type creatures are actually moving out of the forests and the coasts into suburbia. And this one, it's a little bit different and I found it chilling when I actually heard it first hand account from the witness himself. Uh, he's allowed me to use his real name, which is Drew. And obviously, you know, I wanted as much information as I could from this man who first of all sent me his report and then we ended up speaking on the phone and gathered a little bit more information. So Drew grew up in Whitehaven on the west coast of Cumbria, West Cumbria. And they were close to the sea, roughly two and a half miles away from the sea. And the house itself, a semi-detached house, sat on a hill called Crest Hill. And they had sea views from the upstairs windows of this property. So pretty panoramic views, but uh, not that that has any bearing on what happened. Small to medium sized ex mining town that he lived in. Uh, he told me that it was 11 miles northwest of Sellafield nuclear power plant. So he's painting a picture of the area. Really good, sort of tight account that this, this man gave me. And he told me that he was a teenager at the time of the incident. And although he cannot remember the exact date or year he says he thinks he was around 18 years old that would take him to 2003 because he's 39 now at the time of writing this report out to me which he wrote wrote out a few weeks ago and it's now 2024 we're actually in february 2024 so let's go back to 2003 Drew says that he was lying in bed and it was the early hours of the morning. Well, isn't that just the case? You know, so many things happen under this umbrella of darkness. There's not really any accounting for it. Why that happens, I don't know. If, if there's nothing to be taken from these accounts that show that these creatures, these intelligences, no matter, let's throw that net even wider once again, no matter what we're talking about, what genre of the unexplained, they operate under the umbrella of darkness, so that's not good. He slept in the small box room of the house. And I think we've all seen it. I used to live in a three-bedroom council house. Large bedroom, medium bedroom and a small box room. That were mine most of the time. Drew said he woke up suddenly, but not only that, he was wide awake and alert for some reason. And for some reason, he felt compelled to go to the window and look outside. So he parted the curtains. He described the area to me very well. He told me that about 50 foot away from their neighbour's house, over the road, uh, there was a small patch of grass, almost like a green. Lots of these little estates have a little gr green area where kids would play football and other things. And in the middle of this, this green, or this small patch of grass, was a cherry tree. Uh, I think he said that, the, uh, or a cherry blossom tree, let me get that correct. He said as kids, as youngsters, they used to climb this tree. But that's not all that he saw. Because to his absolute alarm, and, and I should imagine terror, on the roof of the neighbour's house opposite, he saw something that quite literally defied description. Drew told me that he saw what could only be described in today's terms as a werewolf or a dogman. How incredible is that, you know? Don't ask me people, I keep getting reports. I don't mean of these things sat on roofs, but I keep getting reports of these things from suburbia. People are seeing these things around built-up areas. And I wonder how many more people are sat on stories such as this. He told me that it was sitting in the perched position, almost like you'd see the legs of a frog 
and then he described tribesmen in in Africa and different countries of the world when you see them crouched rather than sitting. So it's painted a picture of how this thing was sat. Drew just stood at the window in disbelief, shock, and absolute horror, really, looking at this thing. Then things took a turn for the worse because it moved from its position on the roof and began to walk down the gable end of the house. Now here's where it gets really, really freaky because it walked like a spider, head first, except it was on four legs. How terrifying is that? Yeah, I can, I can imagine it, but seeing is believing. You know, I speak to a lot of people who have told me really genuine detailed accounts of these, these things that they've seen and experienced, and I've relayed them to other people. And they've said to me, look, you know, I believe these people are telling the truth, but for me, seeing is believing. And I don't, I don't blame people if they can't get their head around what some people are describing. I've taken enough reports now to know something that's genuine, and I believe this guy's telling me the truth. He said it, it dropped onto the garage roof from the gable end, and then proceeded to walk along the garage roof, down that wall. It went down the side of the garage and through the garden of that property. From there, he said, it went over the wall and up towards the cherry blossom tree. This sounds incredible, doesn't it? You know, and this is in the dead of night. And here's another interesting factor. He said, it stood up and in one smooth motion, reached out, took hold of the tree and literally stepped into it. How does that work? Now, he told me that the cherry blossom tree wasn't huge at all, but it almost stepped up into it. And this thing, this creature that he's looking at was big and it looked very muscular. He said at least seven foot tall, maybe eight foot tall, but very, very big. He, Drew later checked on Google Street Maps and the tree is still there. And he thinks at the time the tree must have been around 15 foot tall. So interesting in itself. When we spoke on the phone, I asked him a few questions and he, he told me that he didn't recall seeing the tree bend or move. So we're looking at something seven to eight foot tall, very broad, very muscular, must weigh 400 pounds at least. And it grips hold of a tree, pulls itself into it and the tree stays rigid or, or not even not even teetering how does that work what are we dealing with so the tree never bent never moved <clears throat> he also said that it must have been winter uh, because in a later message he said there were no leaves on the tree obviously that's the way he could see it he went on to tell me that it was holding on to the tree with one hand and he remembers seeing two extending claw-like fingers sticking out in a in a v shape and he, he emphasized that it was a hand rather than a paw but huge claws on the end of them all very detailed for this young young man sighting 18 years old approximately uh, he, he said that it, it was as if it was looking around uh, he said its color was a silver bluish color um, by what he could tell from the lights of the street lamps. And one other thing of note that we need to stress here is that back then the road still had the amber coloured street lights. So that could have had some bearing on this silver bluish colour. I guess we'll never know. So as if things haven't got freaky enough, it steps up a level. Because what happened next is possibly the most terrifying part. Well, I'm not saying possibly, it is. Because he he claims that it locked eyes with him, literally locked eyes. He knew it was looking at him. He said the connection was instant and suddenly this thing jumped down out of the tree and came bounding over the, over the road towards his mum and dad's house. How crazy is that? Terrifying. Drew then said it disappeared for about one or two seconds. Then its head suddenly appeared at the window. I would have been terrified. I'm sure anybody would. Unbelievable. He told me that at the time, he was approximately 18 years old and he would have been around six foot two, 
in height. He even went into detail about the size of his own head. And how would he know that? He said, because my head was approximately 62 centimetres. He knew that because he was being measured for a crash helmet. So little details that kind of add to it because he, he, he explained that this thing's head must have been almost three times the size of his own. And he had no shame in saying he'd got quite a large head. Drew himself. Um, I don't, I can't even imagine it. He said the head on this thing just seemed to be coming out of the shoulders with next to no neck. And remember at this point, this, this young man, Drew, couldn't have been no more than 12 centimetres away from this terrifying thing that's facing him uh, with nothing more than a sheet of glass separating them. How scary. Can you imagine the terror that you would have felt? I mean, it just defies description. You could also see two to three inch long canine teeth hanging down from its jaw, upper jaw and lower jaw, and also see the breath from this thing hitting the window. He told me that it had big red to amber glowing eyes. We've got this self-illuminating eye going on again. In these stories, it's so prevalent. Self-illuminating, big red to amber glowing eyes. But he couldn't see any discernible pupil. He told me that there were more like red glowing snooker balls and probably around the same size or even bigger. So, oh Christ, it's just, it just, it gives me, it gives me a, a bit of a, a mind freeze every time I think about these things. And it had the most aggressive look on its face, even annoyed. It would, it would hard to discern. Remember, this young man's in shock, absolute shock. Main thing is, he took away from it. It wasn't happy. Was it unhappy that it had been seen? I don't know, because something stirred him in his sleep, probably a minute, two, three minutes prior to it appearing at the window. So was he meant to see it? All questions that I think Drew will probably ask forever, but never know. But whatever the answer, it wasn't happy. Now that's where the memories stop for this young man. Because the next thing Drew remembers was waking up in bed the next morning and feeling confused. At first he thought it was a dream, but then it didn't feel like a dream. And it never has all these years later. And as we've said, he's 39 years old now. And he gave his reasoning. He said, because everything was, I was there. I was at the window. I was watching it. And everything was in exactly the right place in the street. From the telegraph pole to the cherry tree, even the red fuchsia bushes in his mum and dad's garden and the lawn that ran beside his dad's car. He said everything was there. That's what I looked at through that window. So a pretty chilling account. But just a few more pointers to throw in before we, we sort of wind this down. One of the strange things he remembers was its movement. He said it just didn't look normal. Well, he's described it, Auntie, walking along the roof and down the gable end like a spider, head first. This is, uh, he sent me some Google Earth images of the properties, by the way, and the pretty smooth bricks. No, standard semi-detached house. How did it grip? How did this happen? Uh, you know, it just, everything defies logic that when people are talking about these things. He just said it didn't look natural and it almost looked claymation. And he's thinking of Jason and the Argonauts and the way that these animated figures moved on the screen. And he also added that it had a kind of fuzziness to it. It had an almost earthreal quality, which also adds to the mystery, adds to the intrigue of just what it was he was experiencing that night as an 18 year old man it's also interesting to note that drew had been thinking about contacting me whilst he was out walking a few weeks before sending the email and this bit's quite fascinating really he was actually thinking about it on his walk alone in a nice secluded country lane and he suddenly got the feeling of being watched 
How does that work? He said all the sound seemed to stop and he felt that eerie change that I describe as the lower silence. The sun had gone down. Obviously, you'll have a little bit of atmospherics, but he said the atmosphere definitely changed. You know, and I wonder if if we have these experiences like the one Drew had at age 18 approximately, if we create a memory path back to the source, think about it. And think about where you heard that first, because I just wonder if that happens. You know, something that alerts the other side of the firewall, this unexplained that none of us seem able to penetrate. Something that is this unknown other, this other intelligence that gets alerted and says, take note, she or he is talking about us again. Who can say, you know? And then I throw it back to the title of my second book, Truth Proof 2, with the subtitle, Beyond the Thinking Mind, because everything that we're dealing with within the unexplained seems to link to points in a person's life when they're least expecting it and they're in, I don't know, some kind of relaxed mode and you're not expecting this, this interaction from this great unknown other. And it happens when you're in this relaxed state beyond the thinking mind. Uh, I've noted this a few times uh, in other people's accounts. I mean, a few weeks ago on the Truthproof live stream, we interviewed Matt Emch and the Youngstown, Ohio dogman encounter that he had when he was a teenager. Look, at, find it on YouTube, find it on our channel. It's an incredibly terrifying story. But I also noted that Matt has said that since talking about this, he's been almost receiving dreams about this creature that he encountered with a group of teenagers all those years ago. So is this exactly what I've just been talking about? The memory path that takes us back to the source, back to the point of origin. It could well be, you know, I mean, let's just play with this a little bit more. If these intelligences have the ability to speak to us in our minds, who's to say what they're capable of, who's to say that they don't know and hear our every thought. Do you know, I firmly believe this could be happening. You know, and I jump back briefly to go to the Lee Hayward sighting, where Lee Hayward came with me to the clifftops to try and explain what the UFOs, the light forms that I was seeing and describing were in a conventional terms. However, Lee left absolutely his mind, not wrecked, but completely changed because he realized what we saw myself and Lee that night was something totally off the scale of normal. Well, let's jump away from that and let's just get back to Drew's incredible account. 18 year old man, wakes up, something compels him to wake in his bed, go to the bedroom window and look out. There's got to be a message there from this unknown other to this young man. It wanted to be seen, in my opinion. Quite what for, I don't know. But uh, there's a time and a place for everything, and that was the time and a place for Drew's sighting. So I hope you've enjoyed. If you want to hear more of these accounts of the strange and unusual, please press the like and subscribe and let's just keep this growing. So from Paul Sinclair and Truthproof, thank you.